I notice now why Ovius does these little cold opens. Why is that? There's a lag between when you hit record <laughs> and then when you could get to like the actual theme music. So you thought uh, he was being folksy in yeah, reality? It's a I it's a tech I, cover. I thought he was like being clever and shit. Nah, no. man. Maybe. But he was being clever and that he kind of baked it in and made it seem like it was uh you know uh, you, you can get rid of the you can take them out of radio, but you can't take radio, take the out, radio of out of OVS. A hundred percent. Even even as I love what you guys are doing, there's many times where it's clear that you are not taking the, the radio fully out of no, uh, Joe Julia, uh, Joe OVS. It's, it's, it's to be fair, man. Twenty twenty four years. I don't blame them, man. O- old habits do die hard. So here we've amped enough. Okay, and now watch the magic theme song. That's so good. I can't wait to see the Doobie Brothers. I really wanted you to get Michael McDonald over at the Rialto, but he might be a little he might be a little big time. I, have you ever talked to to uh, Chip Patterson about um, unlicensed music? And I know you guys got those done specifically for you. Like shout out to whoever made them. But we used right, to nice price. when we used to produce uh, Bomani Jones show. We got the, this little web series we did. We got access to this unlicensed music library. And the best part about it was you could predict what the song was. Like, what, what's the name of that actual song, that Doobie Brothers song? I know the song. I show, uh, I, I what, like what a fool believes. Minute minute. I kind of think it's minute by minute, but. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. then then the name of the song would be. Second by know, second. Second by second. Or like, if it's what a fool believes, the name of the song would be like, foolish man always <laughs> falls for it. Or like something like that. And the, the the song is almost just like the inversion instead of going up, dun 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 dun, like dun 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 dun. It's uh, but that's a perfect. This is we didn't copy this song, no. But you knew, but you knew what we were going for, so there <laughs> it is. Well, let's podcast. It's OG at the park. I'm Joe Giglio in Omaha at I think it is Charles Schwab Field, maybe or Stadium. One of them. I'll figure it out by the time I leave. Uh, Hayes Permar back in Raleigh holding it down. The maestro of the Rialto. Look like you're in your home setup today. Is that right? Yeah, I try. See, I knew Obvious was going to come in and complain regardless of what we did about, you know, tech stuff we messed up, background. So I think you and I did it right. We set the bar super low on Monday. Yes. Total scramble job. No, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere in a church. By day two, I was actually on Wi-Fi and in shade and a better setting. Now I've got like a real background. There are sports items. The ACC helmets are up there. Um, tomorrow I might even have a, a good microphone. We'll see. But uh, we're, yeah. um, we're bringing no, it up. I, I got you'll canes. be in the studio with me. We'll have a meeting. I don't know how to use the voice. This is supposed to be when I hit this button. It's supposed to change my voice. I don't. I don't think it is. But no. let's have a meeting. Are we going to be together in Raleigh tomorrow? I will be with you. I mean, I'm not putting this on you. I was planning to be with you, okay. you know, in, in studio. So, like, my forced tech has been uh, reacting to you not being in studio. Uh, but I think we job, will. Man. I think we'll do it tomorrow in studio. And truly, it's always better in person. I'm glad you guys make an effort to be in person more yeah. than uh, digital. It just it makes a difference with the flow. Well, we will be together. Thanks to our friends at Copiers Plus. Go to copiers-plus.com. Any of your digital print management needs they have you covered the kiosera would be getting a workout right now with plane passes and um tags for the bags and all this other stuff itineraries so do yourself a favor go to copiers-plus.com also tomorrow ice cream's on me i'm going two roosters out the gate for you for taking i'm going to pay you for this week even though you're like no 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 i want you to do this or that but i am going to pay you for this week because uh, my previous employer is not something that they believed in, but I do. There's, love, no free, there's no some free people love. in radio love some trade. Julio's, I mean, Elvis is going to be mad. He's going to be like, I, we do trade yeah. in radio. It's trade. Yeah. Dude, I care. I'm going to pay you for your services this week. This week. But shit, man, I might pay you an ice cream, okay? That <laughs> and I would think take, it. take that. <laughs> would so take it. Two Roosters, our friend Jared over at Two Roosters, it's Person Street, the home base there. I am ready to get back to Raleigh. I've had a lot of adventures. We'll talk about that and hey joe and if they count or don't count on the hayes per mar scale uh a lot of adventures this week so i'm ready to get back to raleigh i'm ready to get to the coffee cookie dough ice cream it's time because i'm running out of june as well do yourself a favor 
go get the different flavors of the month because it'll be okay. July before you know it. And I know Jared is going to have an unbelievable selection in July as well, but I might need to get one of those hundred dollar tubs. Did you know you could buy the big tub for a hundred dollars? No, I did not. Yes, you can. So uh, there's different ways that you can go about this. Uh, if you have somewhere you could put it, you could buy as much ice cream as you want from two roosters. So check them out. It's two roosters.com. All right. So Don, very quick. I got to tell a story. When I lived in DC, we lived right near this ice cream place called Thomas sweet. It was incredible. It was in Georgetown. And like six of us would go eat and get, you know, $6 worth of ice cream. And we would watch them scoop out of the tub and we'd all get the same thing. And there'd be a fresh tub and six of us would get it and pay between 30 and $40 or whatever it was. And we hadn't even dented the tub. And truly we were like, Hey man, how much is that entire tub if you sell it? Like, there's got to be a better way to do this. And they didn't even have a price for it. Like, we negotiated, you know, but I say buy the tub. Start counting. Like I told you before, get the ice cream cookie cake. It's actually more servings than you think, and it'll last you like two weeks instead of buying a pint every night like I do. Look into the tub. It's it's oftentimes a good economical decision. Yeah, it's a good deal. Uh, yeah. Also, a good deal for Omaha is the College World Series. It's been here since 1950. Uh, can't recommend enough if your team does get here. Even if they don't and you're a big baseball fan, come out. It's a spectacle. Uh, the city does. The city, this is the this is the city's crown jewel. There, there's no way around. This is what they're known for. They embrace it. Uh, everything around here is geared towards it. And it's one of those events where you're like, okay, that was really cool. And, 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 and I got to say, obviously, I came out here to see State. I saw one game and they lost. <clears throat> But that doesn't bother me because I wanted to come out. I wanted to be here for this event. Carolina yesterday ends up losing to Florida State. Yeah, that was a tough one. Excuse me, I can't talk. <clears throat> they end up losing to Florida State. What's been and Carolina had an unbelievable run, just like State did to get here. Carolina obviously has a few more advantages than State with their facility and their brand name and um, their overall program success. But they they. I mean, no, no shame in what they were able to pull off to get here. Um, obviously, beat Virginia, end up losing to Tennessee, who looks like they're probably going to win this tournament or at least get to the final. Uh, but it was kind of weird yesterday, Hayes, seeing Florida State walk around. I'm, I'm like looking for patches. I'm looking for anything that indicates they're from like, the ACC. Do they walk around covering like the ACC patch that is required on their uniform? They're like, you know, <laughs> kind of like LeBron James with the uh, tattoos taped over or. or, or Nathan Scott with his uh, tattoos taped no, over. I, and, uh, I need them to uh, to like work. Um, like their 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 slogan needs to be like accelerate to the top or something. So anytime they have to put ACC on something, they just turn it into accelerate and be like FSU accelerating to the top. Like this is not an ACC uh, acronym. That's not what this is. Brilliant. So um, well, Pat goes home. Tar Heels go home. But the College World Series stays here. And Omaha has been here since 1950. They have a contract to stay here until 2035. Uh, the only reason anyone outside of the state has ever even heard of Omaha, other than Peyton Manning, who they probably should pay a bunch of money to, too, uh, is because of this event. So uh, you're, you're stealing my take. So let me let me jump yeah. in here. Uh, I know you like a good steak, and Omaha is famous for that. But aren't they almost almost as famous for shipping the steaks as making yeah. them there? <laughs> but regardless, my question was, would you? Go to Omaha, Nebraska for any other reason than the College World Series. No. You and your family wouldn't be like, hey, let's go to Omaha. Would no. you go to Augusta, Georgia, just to visit Augusta, Georgia? Not in the first weekend of April or whatever, but like, would you be like, let's take a trip to Augusta, Georgia to check it out? No, I've been to Augusta for a AAU basketball tournament in North Augusta, and the answer is no. I'm not knocking El Paso. It's a great town. But, like, would you go there for anything other than a Sun Bowl? I wouldn't even go to the Sun Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, you're messing out. <laughs> Your sports channel uh, right, uh, says yes. But, <laughs> but, okay. But, so, one of the knocks you always see about the ACC tournament in Greensboro is, like, Greensboro is a crap town. We deserve bigger than this. And, to me, that thinking is so flawed because – Making your sporting event, and I'm not I'm not calling Greensboro a crap town. I'm I'm only gonna use that reference to for people like Bayheim or others who have said that. But like that's one of the coolest things about putting a sporting event in a place that no one would ever go other than to that sporting event, right? Again, I'm not knocking Greensboro. It's got historical sites to visit, it's got many other great things. I'm a North Carolinian, I love it. But 
if someone had the foresight to say we are going to make this the mecca of ACC basketball and the ACC tournament was the mecca of basketball tournaments, I truly think it would have been better in the long term. Going to New York City, claiming that you know Syracuse is in New York, we always you know we always joke about the ACC at Yankee Stadium and all that stuff. You know, it, it's a joke. Whereas if Syracuse had a really good squad and they think they're going to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, that's the time where Syracuse is like, you know what? We need to go to Omaha, the, the equivalent of Omaha. Like, right? Like, like my team's in it. Let's go. This is going to be fun and exciting. And while you're there, you're going to, you know, go to that little hole-in-the-wall barbecue restaurant that you hear all the basketball people talking about. And then there's also the element of if – Nebraska or Missouri or Iowa or even like some of the Texas or Oklahoma teams that are a little bit closer, if those teams make it into the College World Series or if you're somebody who makes it regularly and now you win a game or two, then, yeah, some of your fans might be like, you know what, let's pack up and go for the weekend. I mean, I don't have to sell you on the magic of Greensboro Coliseum when State, Duke, Wake, UNC, some combination are all playing on the same day and you get – uh, fans cheering for their team and jumping in and cheering against the other team. Like, that's some of the best in sports. And I just – I will always believe that the move would have been – it It felt like – almost like chasing football felt the same way. It felt like you were trying to justify not having a network and not having as much money by being like, we're in New York City. We're in Washington, D.C. Or maybe some, you know, pretense of fairness for moving it around to be close to other people. No, it should have been in Greensboro. It should have stayed in Greensboro. People would have made a trek there. It would have had a branding thing. You and I know that that just like I'm sure you're experiencing Omaha, if you get in an Uber, if you stop at a CVS, if you go anywhere, people are saying, are you here for the College World Series? Are the, you know, like there would be a bar that would come up with a jello shot type challenge, you know, to, to, that all these things would organically happen if you just kept it there every year. That's a lesson I would learn from Omaha and, and, even, and even Augusta with the Masters. No, Augusta, no offense, is a shit town. It is a shit town anywhere you walk 10 feet off of the Augusta property or if you're not on maybe some other golf course. <laughs> it's like, but that's the funny thing is seeing a you know, mid-level golfer eating at mid-level restaurant because there's only like five of them in town. So. That's that's what I think the ACC. Now that we don't have an ACC team that we care about locally to talk about in Omaha, I just want to blast the ACC for not learning. Making places special is a big thing. So is it too late? Like, could they make Charlotte since they have football there? Like, if they said, okay, we're going to put the ACC tournament men, men's basketball in Charlotte every year from now on, is it, is it too late? I think it's too late because Charlotte doesn't want – like, that. that's the thing. You need something like <laughs> Omaha – <laughs> Charlie didn't want that to be their identity. You know what I mean? They, they've they always, and I'm not, they've yeah. always thought they were like too big time for college sports. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And to their credit, other than their team stinking, they've done all the, you know, they've got light rail and big stadiums and, you know, lots of hotels. They've done all the things that, that are a pro sports town. So, no, I think, and I think they would kind of thumb their nose at being the every year host of the AC tournament. It's got to be some of that. I think a town that you don't go to normally, that you only go for the sporting event, makes it special. The Sun Bowl was another one where, I mean, you know, you just it, it takes going there and seeing that population there, and it's like, you know, a Spanish-speaking population, people that you would be like, oh, I mean, I'm being completely stereotypical, but like, I would have thought you guys would prefer European football, not American football, and they probably do, but they freaking love the Sun Bowl and they like go all out for it and it makes it more special than seeing the Citrus Bowl in Orlando where nobody cares that you're in Orlando. You know what I mean? I'm laughing because obviously Gary Hahn got himself in trouble talking about the Sun Bowl. I was thinking about that before you started. So good. It's so good. You know what that means? Housekeeping. Yeah, somebody <laughs> should have shushed him off going off to the side as well. You know, when I, well, real quick, when I go on Josh Graham's radio show, if I ever say anything that's like slightly like, hey, let's keep it moving like we just did there, yeah. he's got the cut of right after Gary Hahn said the uh, oh, El Paso yeah. line. He goes, let's go down on the sideline to Tony Hayes. Just like it's a total normal throw. 
So Josh Graham uses that for like, hey, awkward, uh, awkward transition. Let's go down the sideline with Tony Hayes. Let's go to housekeeping. Let's keep it moving. Uh, Inovana.com. Inovana can clean your house. Yeah, they'll, they'll be out at Ovius's house next week, but they have plenty of time for you. Check them out. It's Inovana.com. E-O-N-O-V-A-N-A. That's Inovana.com. A little bit of housekeeping. We have the sports podcast festival at the Rialto. Yes, the Rialto, that's Hayes Permars' joint. He is the maestro of the Rialto. The Sports Podcast Festival will, fe- will feature the shutdown full cast, Hand in the Dirt. That's our man, Michael Felder. And, of course, the OG will be there Saturday, August 24th. Someone had the f- beautiful foresight to get therialto.com as their URL. So that's all you have to do. Don't worry. You're not going to be buying tickets for the Rialto in New York or Boston or Omaha, those are the that's the Raleigh Rialto, the oh, Rialto.com. That's amazing. Go there, you can buy some tickets. They're 62 bucks. I mean, that's not a lot, people. You got three different shows. Uh, we'll have all kinds of uh, fun extra stuff for you that day. I promise. We'll even have some hats that are promotional items. IRS, they're promotional items. I promise. Uh, you got all kinds of great things at the Rialto. You know, obviously, you have movies. You have comedy because when you were growing up, you were like, hey, man, there used to be comedy over here. I, I want yep. comedy shows at my place. And you got great concerts. Uh, David Cook is going to be there on July 19th. I will be there on July 19th. So go Can check I, it out. It's therialto.com to see that full schedule. I don't think I've broken this news yet. Uh, in July, on I believe July 26th and 27th, we will be showing Star Trek 1 and Star Trek 2. And Captain Kirk will be there. No, William Shatner is coming to the no. Rialto to watch Star Trek one and Star Trek two and do a Q and a afterwards. He's in town for galaxy con and he's going to hop on over to the Rialto. Look at you, man. You, you, you were stifling the laugh when my announcement was yeah. Star Trek one and Star Trek two, but then when I threw the with William Shatner yeah. in there, yeah. are you out of your Falcon mind? My goodness. What, what a pull. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. I might have to, I might have to put on a, uh, a con, outfit complete with the like fake chest breath yeah. like they gave him basically fake boobs so he could have a bigger chest con kirk you listen to me kirk i definitely could see you trying to do something like that and the sports podcast festival is presented by breeze through our friends at breeze through have you covered wherever you go this summer was over at walnut creek for the dave matthews show last week and of course, right there on Pool Road is a breeze through, able to get some ice, able to get some beverages before they were $20 a pop. Woo. You've explained to me as a business owner who sell who serves alcohol why these things have to be priced the way that they are. But my goodness gracious, do yourself a favor and hit up the breeze through before you head over to Walnut Creek this summer. All right, more awkward pitter patter chatter while I try to find the right buttons because again. None of this stuff is in any kind of order. Let's see. We're moving on. You know, I wish I could move on to the nature's relief today over in Garner before I get on the plane just to kind of chill. Uh, don't need quite an Ativan level. I just need a little bit of a chill. Uh, the best thing to do, hit them up. Nature's relief. They're in Garner. They're old school out by the peddler on Glenwood out there. Um, they got all, they got five different locations also off, uh, Western Boulevard. So find them, find the nearest one near you. Nature's relief, hemp store.com. That's nature's relief. R E L E A F. Uh, if you have questions, go in there, say, Hey, uh, what, what do I want with a Delta eight? What's the difference between a Delta eight and a Delta nine? Uh, how about just something CBD that doesn't have a, a psychoactive element? Do I want a drink? Do you want a gummy? Do you want a powder that you put in a drink? I mean, there's all kinds of ways. Uh, to get yourself into a little bit of a different state. So check them out at the Nature's Relief uh, nearest you. And then if you want to save money, also in Garner, just go around the corner, have a chat with my man, Matt Davis. He's on Aversboro Road there. 919-779-8277. Again, that's 919-779-8277. The best thing to do, have a conversation about how you can save on your auto and home and life insurances. Matt is there to help you. He can also help you with his financial services, which have come in handy for you, yours truly here as we tried to figure out this business model without knowing anything about business. So check them out. It's uh, Check them out at uh, insuregarner.com or you can call them at 919-779-8277. I, I don't need to sell Hayes on the, the 
benefits of the butcher's market. He already knows. He went to the beach this weekend. I've often told the butcher's market people you should have some sort of prepackaged. Hey, you're going from Raleigh to the beach this weekend. Uh, they have locations in Wilmington, though, so you can hit them there as well. Much better than going to your food line and hoping there's uh, a skirt steak or something in there that you might be able to make a fajita out of. So do yourself a favor. Hit up the butcher's market just like Hayes did on his way down to the beach earlier this week. I'll find them a spot in Atlantic Beach. Let's let's get to AB. Yeah. But everyone in Raleigh is down there. I just saw all of them. Let's take the butcher's market down there as well. Well, and while you're finding in a, a spot, and I have no doubt that you have the skills to find it, you know, the, the experts can really find you in realty, and that's hometown realty. It's myhtr.com. Hometown realty, six locations from here, from Raleigh to the coast. Not here, Raleigh to the coast. More than 250 agents. They know what they're doing. Buy and sell with confidence. That's the key. Don't try to do this on your own. Don't think you're going to save 3% or, or make, you can make it happen on your own. Not a great idea. So check them out. It's myhtr.com. I really should get better at signaling to you that I need to fumble through these transitions and figure <laughs> out where I am. But no, I think it's become uh, I think it's yeah. become a um, an endearing part of the show. I feel like it's better when it's narrated. That here we go. We have a we have a fumbly train. Oh, I like this one. All right, so I'm watching the Stanley Cup playoffs last night, and the Panthers did not close out the Oilers, much to my chagrin. And I'm 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 going to be fully transparent with you here. Um, I am obviously disappointed for that reason, but I was also kind of amazed at what Connor McDavid was able to do for the Edmonton Oilers last night. Oilers end up winning 5-3 down in Florida. McDavid had two goals, two assists. One of them was empty net, but uh, I mean, at this point, he's got eight points in the last two games. That's eight points in two elimination games. That's kind of, sort of ridiculous. So they're going back to Edmonton. Uh, So my number one thought was Connor McDavid is good. I mean, that's that's some hot, takey radio analysis, right? I could have done that. Come on. Okay. You got to okay. give me a little bit deeper than that. I could have gone the Connor McDavid was good. You got to save those easy ones for me. Connor McDavid is good, but it kind of made me think of the conversation that we had with Rod Brindamore when we were talking about where the Canes power play ranked this year. And I think it was fourth in the league. And, and two of the teams in front of them were Edmonton and, and the Lightning, who have, you know, fairly highly skilled players. And then when I mentioned Edmonton, he was like, I go, yeah, they got a pretty good one. He goes, yeah, they got, they got two. Uh, I'm mentioning Leon Dreisaitl as well. So McDavid now has 42 points in 23 playoff games. That is five off of Wayne Gretzky's all-time record of 47 in 1985. Now, Hayes, I, you don't strike me as a number stickler the same way that I kind of am. So maybe this doesn't, does it bother you that the NHL offers no context to Connor McDavid, like, the, you know, they were talking about how he's really close to knocking off one of the all-time records. And I'm like, uh, can we get some context here, please? Like, just give right. for games at least. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a numbers stickler guy. It would be nice to know the number of names. But I'm also not a I, – I wish I had a – somebody will create a good, like, formula for this. Like, hey, here's a formula we can use in this sport to compare players of different era. Because to your point, yes. Gretzky played more games, but I believe without fewer, fewer. I mean, played fewer games, Yeah, but I believe as a league, weren't there more goals per game at that time? Yeah. Weren't like goalies just like, didn't they look like <laughs> other skaters? Only they maybe had like bigger it's socks or whatever. <laughs> and like, yeah. And like some of the dudes that like some of those guys would be e-bugs in today's world. Whereas now we've got like ninjas that like, you know, can fly around. So there's, there's right. context both ways. Right. Yeah. Gretzky, McDavid's got more games, but then then the also but the context of well, in Gretzky's day, if you score two goals in a game, somebody might come knock your head off. Whereas like now, the league has recognized, no, actually, let's, right. let's play free flowing <laughs> hockey, and that's better. So, yes, I always like the context, but then somebody else is going to come on top and be like, what about this context? You know, yeah. so I'm I, I, I'm willing to let it slide. I didn't like it. I just wanted the games at least. Gretzky had 47 points in 18 games. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, the Oilers in 1985 were the full Voltron Oilers. That was Gretzky on the top line and Mark Bessier on the second line. Um, and the first round was only best of five. But the the Oilers only lost three games that year in the playoffs. So they went 15-3 and three on their way to winning their fourth Stanley Cup. 
with Wayne Gretzky. Um, so that was one point I wanted to make. The other point was, what, what is going on with Sergei Bobrovsky? And like, if you're the Carolina Hurricanes, even from last year, or if you're the New York Rangers from this year, are, are you watching Bob and being like, hey, buddy, why couldn't you just like give up a stray goal to us here or there when we were playing you? Right. Yeah. Remember last year, he was unbelievable. He was off the charts crazy against the Hurricanes. Uh, it, it felt so dumb. Like it was one of those things that I would make fun of anybody else if they weren't Rod Brindamore. But then when he was like, we didn't get swept. Right. We did not get swept. <laughs> and and you're like, dude, you got you literally lost every game. You got swept, right? right? <laughs> but you knew what he meant. You knew it was like we played like our skaters versus their skaters. It was toe to toe. Everything was you know an inch here, an inch there. Uh, you know, just barely. And the difference was Bob keeping keeping pucks out of the net. Better than anybody that we had could do it, right? Um, so he turned I, into I, a pumpkin I, in the Vegas series last year. I'm not saying he turned into a pumpkin last night because McDavid, the one that he scored through his feet, like from the from the goal line, was kind of sort of ridiculous. I mean, that that's Connor McDavid. But when it was 3-0, you could tell Florida was pushing to get back in the game. Even Paul Paul Maurice on the bench was like, "It's okay, we're we're fine." He gave it the patented. We're, we're out playing them five on five. And they were making a push, and then they give up. And then Bobrovsky gives up the fourth goal, and I'm like, obviously losing money on it. But I'm like, dude, come on, you can win <laughs> four to three. You're not going to win the game five to four. Like that. That's the kind of save, honestly. And that's where I wanted to get into the Hurricanes portion of this conversation, and not just whinging about my lost bet. But it's like that's the kind of save like that has eluded the Hurricanes, and makes me wonder like, are the are the Hurricanes good enough in goal? To win the Stanley Cup, because Stuart Skinner now, who has been, who has been much criticized in Edmonton, and for and for good reason, he has some games where he just bleeds goals. He's now nine and zero in the playoffs this year in games four through seven. That's pretty fucking good, Hayes. Yep. That's probably good enough to win the Stanley Cup. No, so I I would think if I'm the Canes, right, Connor McDavid's not falling off a tree to you, right? So you can't sit here and go, well, how do we win the Cup? Well, we don't have Connor McDavid. And by the way, Connor McDavid hasn't won the cup yet. Not yet. I'm sure he will at some point, but not yet. Yep. You kind of have to look at this if you're the Canes and be like, well, what can we learn? What can we take from this? Shit, man, I would take that. You you probably are good enough in goal. You just have to get a few more of those timely saves. And 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 you have a real opportunity this offseason to kind of remold around the core that you have. And I, I think if I'm Eric Tulski and if I'm – Tom Dundon, and if I'm Rod Brendan, where I'm watching this and I'm going, what can we do to add a few more pieces to make this thing work? That's that was my reaction, other than being like, okay, Bob, let's make one more save, buddy. All right, so I got a couple questions. One, and I'm terrible with names. You, you have a much better memory. You'll you'll remember these. So in baseball, when you have like the ace, and everybody yeah. knows like this is a dude, every lineup fears him. You know the the Vegas you know, drops the Vegas, you're going to win that game and we'll drop the number of runs scored, predict it, you know. So when you have an ace pitcher and everybody recognizes they're good, they're top of their game, you still know they're not going to go 25-0 and 0 in the regular season and 5-0 and 0 in the postseason, right? It's it's always kind of weird when you see them give up three hits in an inning. Um, but whether it was like, was it Kershaw a few years ago who's just like would dominate all the time and then in that one game where they needed him, yeah. Would sort of disappear. It's not with Bob. Verlander. Yeah. Ver, yeah. Verlander, another one. Yes. Uh, so you can still be that dominant guy who strikes fear into the heart of, you know, opposing teams, but then have a, a bad game or even like two in a row. Like it happens. That doesn't mean you've like lost your, your mojo or whatever. So there's always that of like, maybe we mystify the great goalies too much. Um, but to your other point, here would be my question for you. And I don't know the numbers exactly right of average goals scored in a game or average, you know, goals that the Canes score in the game. But in my mind, if you told me, hey, we got a goalie that is going to give up two goals every game, but he will never give up three goals, would that be enough for the Canes to win the playoff? Absolutely. If we win four games out of every series, knowing that we've got to get to three goals every time or like send it to overtime and you're playing 50-50. That's kind of how I feel about it. We don't need three shutouts in a series. We don't need him to limit to a total of five goals in a six-game series. We need him to be give up no more than two goals in every game. And obviously, you know, 
hockey doesn't work like that. We can't just say, hey, we'll concede you two goals to the start, and now let's just play offense and, like, see how it plays out. Like, you, Next goal you have to actually play the game, right? But in my mind, to your point, no, I don't feel like, you know, our, our defense is supposed to be so good. Slavin, one of the best defenders and clearly one of the most gentlemanly defenders because he keeps winning that stupid award. I hate that award. The nice guy award. Get out of here. It's like you're talking to the media awards. He talked to the media about get out of here. The awards are for people who score goals and win games. All right. Uh, but, and, and I think they look at Kachekov and nobody right now says, oh my God, we've been storing a Bobrovsky or a, 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 a his, Shisterkin. We've been, we've got one and we just haven't been playing it. We haven't been deploying our secret weapon. I don't think anybody thinks that, but I do think people are allowing for maybe there's just a little bit of tweak. One level up that maybe could check coffee go. And to me, if he's the, I'll give up no more than two goals in any game in a series, then that that's good enough. So whatever could could check off is right now, if you consider him a six out of 10, a seven out of 10, an eight out of 10, whatever you consider him, I think he needs to be 0.5 better. If he's a six out of 10, we need a 6.5. If he's a seven, we need him to be a 7.5. And I would take my chances with Kachekov right now. That's where I'm at. I feel like I have to get a little bit better at your extra beat. I feel like I'm, I'm anticipating a little bit. No, no, like, you're Whoa. good. You have like a little coda that happens after that. <laughs> I think it's also partly the not being in person thing. Because then I'm worried if I've like waited too long. And then if there's like a half second pause. So I'm trying to jump back in with one more in case you're not ready with the button. You know, so. that, that time I was like hot and ready with the button. That was kind of sort of probably myself. Uh, since I don't have any guests, though, I want to make sure that I give a shout out to my people at Heaster. Heaster Automotive Group. HeasterAuto.com. I don't know if you know this, Hayes. I learned this this year. You you could sell your car to the Easter Automotive Group. Our friend Josh Goodson likes to make fun of me for not knowing this, but it's true. Check him out, HeasterAuto.com. Uh, buy and sell your cars. Also, get your car detailed. I had recently had to do this because a, a car that I got from my dad had a bunch of mice in it. So they got rid of the mice. They made it look like new. <laughs> yes, Mice in the mice. car? Yeah. You know, my pops, what, they live what on the golf What kind of game course. is Lou running? You know, they live on that golf course and he likes to keep that garage door open and they find a way into that house, man. They got that deep uh, driveway. So how's the pup? Is that the pup here? Yeah, she's all right. Uh, Let me. No, no, you're good. I enjoy the pup because remember one of the my all time favorite moments of radio was when your your pup had her period for the first time. And you you had to give us the play by play of the period. (laughs) So now we're in the stage of life. You're not going to believe this. She has a false pregnancy. She thinks she's had a baby. Oh. She carries a toy around that she oh. believes is her baby, and she like nests for it. She tears stuff up um, because she like thinks she's having a baby, and we hate to bring it to her. Like you're not, you're not yeah. going to have a baby. <laughs> it is. Sweet. It's cute. It's sad, and we would let her. Uh, we would allow her to exist in this illusion if it didn't yeah. mean that she like tore up everything. To try and make a nest for said yeah, baby. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think Roback definitely would have a dog design uh, for, for your dog and for any of yours, uh, each by state. They're unbelievable. They're comfortable. Uh, the hoodies are the best, best designs, best golf stuff in the game. And they got all kinds of different shorts. They have all kinds of clothing for women as well. So check them out. It's Roback.com. That's R H O back, Roback. Dot com use that promo code OG20 and save 20% on your initial order. Really thank Oroback for jumping on. They, ju- they kind of jumped onto the madness haze of uh OG after dark, which is really kind of Gilio drunk after drunk Gilio after dark. So uh I, our corporate sponsor. So I was there for for one of them, one of the best ones, the right. the most state duke. And I loved how much uh Obvious was like, this is chaos, this is terrible, this is hurting our brand. This is not good, guys. This is people are drinking and Brenton's mic isn't perfect. And like yeah. the only feedback was like a little too much Brenton. But other than that, I was awesome. 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 Yeah. 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 A little, so a little too much Brenton. <laughs> that was that was the only negative I saw. No, that wasn't for me. That's that's what I saw the people say. Oh man. If I ever do need some legal help with my uh, uh speaking not of Brenton, my best behavior. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. Was, that was my lead into the lawyer uh, ad. Yeah, come on. He can't that was even a joke. Defend himself here. It's, that was a it's joke. Whitaker and Hamer, Josh Whitaker, Joe Hamer, WH. Lawyer. Oh, there's the pooch. Um, WH. Lawyer. And they have all their locations they're, they're, on their Instagram today. They had their Clayton location. Uh, so go check them out. Clayton, Garner, Raleigh. Uh, best way to find them is wh.lawyer for all of your law needs. Um, I was out here. I'm still out here in Omaha. My friend Hazen Lancaster was out here in Omaha as well. You might know him better as the Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority man. The man with the plan. And he doesn't believe in contracts, but he does believe in saving you money. So go to bugsbite.com. Get rid of all those pests inside and outside your home. And I don't know about you, Hayes, but after a few too many steaks and ribs, it's probably time for a break, a good break, a good lunch break. Get myself a bowl, Thai chicken, peanut crunch, or get yourself a smoothie. Do yourself a favor. Get the app for Happy and Hell. Download that app. Um, get, you get yourself a free smoothie when you do that. And, and within a month of your birthday, even if it's passed, you get a free bowl. Even more, even better, when you order... You order on the app and you go into North Hills. North Hills, and yes. And you get yourself a LaCroix while you're at it. So get the app Happy and Hail. They're also off of Six Forks and Strickland and over in Durham. So Happy and Hail. We appreciate their support here on the OG. All right. I'm just going to try yep. to talk right through this one now. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I think I can oh, do God. it. All right, so the thing happened yesterday that I knew was going to happen. I picked the Panthers. I was able to be in Iowa yesterday. So I was able to actually gamble yesterday. You are in Iowa. <laughs> Thank God for the WNBA. Otherwise, I would have had a disastrous day yesterday. But the WNBA picked me up, the Phoenix Mercury. Just want you to know this. They've had some. They've had some fairly significant injuries, so their number is off. They were a five-point home dog last night, which doesn't account for the fact that Brittany Griner didn't play like in the first ten games of the season, and then one of their best three-point shooters has been out with a concussion as well. Well, guess who came back last night? Oh, griner has been back, but their best three-point shooter came back. They set in a WNBA record between the two teams with thirty-three threes last night. Not only did the Mercury cover, they won the game outright. So. There's a couple of different angles. Chip Patterson and I have talked about this, man. This is next level. You want to bet college football? Cool. Vegas is on to you. You want to bet the NFL? Forget it. Just throw darts or, or light your money on fire. Okay. <laughs> but if you want to actually try to make a little bit of money, take start taking a hard look at the WNBA. So uh, I was able to recoup from my Florida losses last night because of my Phoenix Mercury. So very happy about that. Maybe that's the thing that could get us talking more reasonably, reasonably about the WNBA if we like take out the personalities and right. just start talking the lines, yeah, right? Like, <laughs> I used to love uh, on uh, Highly Questionable with Dan Levitard and Bomani was on there for a while, and then his dad would be on there, and part of the charm was his dad chiming in without knowing things, and they wouldn't specifically make gambling picks, but they basically would, and he'd be like, "Oh, oh the monkey have had many, uh, many injuries, but tonight." <laughs> tonight the oil laundry of like the chris Berman, you know like yeah. nobody circles the wagon like the phoenix mercury you, you know yeah. like uh you know just saying things that nobody really knows but like yeah the mercury that's what we're doing tonight so. uh now let me ask you a philosophical question about gambling my mom's side of my family is from scotland they, they're they're in euro 24 they're playing switzerland today okay. are you okay should i be okay morally betting against scotland or or what do you think on this yeah, you tell your mom you tell your mom it's the emotional hedge. You convince oh, okay. your mom that I'm only doing this. It's it's an emotional hedge. Like if if Scotland wins, I will be devastated. Okay. So because of that, I've put a little money out there to soften the blow and I'll win, you know, fifty dollars or whatever it is. I and, can go across and, the bridge then is what you're saying and, and take Switzerland this, this afternoon. Absolutely. Okay, that's my play then. Switzerland minus one fifteen against Scotland. The Brave. We are this close to crowning a new Stanley Cup champion with the action heating up on the ice. It's even hotter at DraftKings Sportsbook. 
With same game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and much more, don't miss out as the Stanley Cup playoffs wind down. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code OG24. That's OG24 and get $150 in bonus bets when you bet just $5. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Now I got to find the disclaimer, which is... Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and 467 369 In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. See terms and responsible gaming resources at dkng.co slash MMA. Lightning round. All right, I, I see the buttons for the lightning round. I'm just going to hit one because I don't think it's going to make a difference. Does my voice sound any difference now? No, but I do like how you try to talk a little bit different when you think that the the, the voice modulator is working. Not, so not like, me, yes, not. technically your voice does sound different, but no, it is not being modulated at all by a microphone. Uh, okay, well, this is supposed to be monster it's voice. Okay. I'm That's hitting the right. button. I, I hear nothing. I'm well, sure can I, can tell me. What can I'm I start the lightning round with a topic that's a carryover from a little bit earlier? Uh, well, let's, yeah, start we, with, it, let's start with an easy one. Can we start with an easy uh, one? No, go ahead. I guess. I Come on. This will be well, I just feel like, hey, I was going to sing the Happy and Hail song. Oh, let's okay. take a break. Let's take a hockey break. Brought to you by Happy and Hail. Because we mentioned the Canes, but we have not mentioned that they took the tag off yesterday. They took the oh, interim okay. tag off your boy, Eric Tolsky. And I know you guys have already talked about it. But for a quick lightning round reaction, I just wanted to hear what you thought about Tolsky being the official GM. Um, I do think there is a committee there. I think there was with Don Waddell. I think Don's role was really to have somebody who had contacts around the league. Obviously, somebody who knew a bunch of other GMs, knew all the uh, agents. I think that's important person to have in your corner. Uh, will they hire someone of that that's to it. do that type of job? I hope so. Will okay, they hire somebody who will, who will be more of a face in the community, which Don, to his eternal credit, was unbelievable at. Uh, particularly since he had no connection to this area. So uh, to, to just to be able to survive the uh, Kremlin politics of the Centennial Authority by itself was, was fairly amazing. So, no, I, I did not think they would do anything unusual on that committee. Like Dundon, Brindamore, Tolsky's like he's, I mean, I think it's a compliment at this point. He's the nerd. He's the math yep. guy. Um, and I think you need that. So good for him and good for Dundon, I think. Uh, the our, again, our conversation with Rod was a little bit, he, he wants, he was like, he's super emotional. Like, I want to bring everybody back. I want to take another run at this thing. I want to win this thing. But he was like, when I had said, yeah, but you have a real opportunity here to kind of remold around that core. He's like, well, you now sound like Dundon. And I was like, well, I think Dundon likes me. And there's probably a reason sometimes we think alike. So sure. no, no big surprises there. And also bringing back Jalen Chatfield. That was big for the hurricane. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of coming back, Elliot Avent, lightning round number one one point five. I don't Elliot get to, coming back. I don't get to chime in on Tolsky. Oh, I the, thought you my were... only my only two things wait, are wait, one. Wait, wait, let me hit the button again. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, lightning round still. I'm messing things one up. Number one. <laughs> one is I, I I'm okay with it, but is everybody else okay with Malcolm Gladwell as our GM? Like, is he, is he going to go to the team and be like, all right, guys, we need to get 10,000 hours in in training camp this year to, to really do it. You know, like, uh, we don't get I want you to re- seven seconds. We're not getting it. <laughs> but no, to, yes, yes, 100%. Like, all those, my, you know, but to you, the, the point you said is the one that I think is most important. I don't, I'd be lying if I said I know what a hockey call looks like for a trade, but there is something about, uh, you know, and Tosky's been around the NHL now long enough where I'm sure he has friends and has met people or whatever. But it did feel like we always feel like Carolina Hurricanes were a little bit different. We're not in the usual hockey markets. And we need like 
it seemed like Waddell was the guy that could get his buddies on the phone. Hey, man, let's do a deal. And like Tolsky's there be like, this is the deal we want. But they're listening because it's the guy, Don Waddell, right? Instead of some nerd being like, uh, our guy's better value than yours. Give us more. Like, whoa, whoa, easy, buddy. Like, uh, you know, I don't know that's how they work at all. But in my mind, we do still need that, like, reason that people pick up the phone from Carolina to talk hockey uh, that isn't just like, let me talk to this guy who's going to act like he's a lot smarter than I am and then fleece me on this trade. Why that would be like, no, man, we're just we're looking for a defense minutes and cap room just like everybody else. Come on, trade with us. So um, that was I'm I'm very happy with the signing, but I 100 percent agree. We need if it's not Justin Williams, we need somebody that everyone else in the NHL likes and will still do business with us. Hitting the button, lightning round, item number two. <laughs> no idea if that's working or not, but <laughs> here we are. Uh, Elliot Emmett has, came back from the College World Series in Raleigh yesterday and told the gathered media that, yeah, he will be back next season. Good for him. I know he has another. He's got two total years left on his deal, so that's good. Uh, happy for Elliot. You know, when we had talked uh, on the show before they got to Omaha, I said, you know, listen, I don't know what he's going to do, but I know that he really had wanted to get back here, really enjoyed this group, and and they did great just to get here, kind of maxed it out. And he, he made some of those comments like, hey, I know we were playing at a really high level, but uh, I'm just so proud of, of where this team came from and, and how far they were able to go. So good that Elliot will be back next season. I will be looking forward to that as well. All right. But if, if I, having listened to you, do I read between the lines and hear correctly that you think that end of that contract might be the end of it for Elliot? Yeah, I would think okay. so. Yeah. Okay. Um, and hopefully the the plan to have Chris Hart replace him remains in place. Let's just keep our fingers crossed if, on that one. If, this, if it was 1986 again, Elliot, we'd be looking at becoming the AD, right? Yeah. Like you just elevated your most senior knows the culture of our school has had success. So people don't think he's a loser. Like Ray Tanner, Jim Balvano style. You just raised to the, the AD, right? Um, exactly. It, whenever he officially retires, I presume he'll be on call to be ambassador for NC state baseball and greater athletics yeah. for as long as uh, he's around. Right? Most do. I hope so. <laughs> I think the most people do. A complicated relationship with his school. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll move on though. <laughs> this is the large robot voice. I don't know if it is or not. I hit the button though. <laughs> Definitely not working. Uh, it's the item. robot voice. Next item. Tiger Woods is going to get an exemption to basically play in any PGA tour event that he wants to. Are you okay with this? Hayes? No, he's got to earn it every week. Just like, uh, you know, <laughs> Brendan Todd is out there going back and forth. No, of course I'm 100% okay with this. Although, it diminishes the like, yeah, we want to see Tiger back out there. You know, we really want to see on the PGA Tour, Bryson. We'd like to see him like in the next week or two on the PGA Tour. So I think I can't remember if I got into this with you. I'm not taking sides anymore in the live PGA. I'm just fully in figure it out mode, get it together. But yes, Tiger, if Tiger wants the tour named after him, they should na name the tour after him. Um, let Tiger play. I, I assumed that there was already a back back channel way to get tiger in any event that they needed him to get in right but like yes let's not no reason to pretend like that's not the case if he i understand has been golf let's let him do whatever he wants if i understand it correctly like any sponsor exemption can happen on a regular tour event right but um there's only so many of those so instead of basically saying we're wasting one or using one on tiger one of the allocated ones they've created a special one at the PGA, this is from Mark Schleybaugh at ESPN. They've created an exceptional lifetime achievement exemption for Tiger Woods uh, in part. And, and this is for the specifically, though, for these signature events that he has not been able to play in because he does not qualify them for them. You know, he hasn't won since the Masters in 19, obviously had the disastrous leg injury that he's still trying to really recover from. Um, the memo that was obtained by Schleybaugh says, the, the, I love this is the part I love the, the Tiger Woods is his own category as a player and basically anyone who has an exceptional lifetime achievement threshold of 80 plus career wins so it's like no it's not really the Tiger Woods exemption it's like hey if you've won 80 times Phil uh anyone else you want you know David you, get Duval, there. you want to get to 80 come on down you can play in anything that you want uh so I just thought it was kind of funny and no none of these guys would have the money that they're currently making without Tiger Woods. So he Correct. absolutely should have. I, my question, my question for you, 
what would be the Gilio? How would they write the Gilio specific rule so it only applies to you? Like if you've driven from Garner to PNC Arena more than 250 times, you get you get free popcorn. What like they have to write a rule that looks like a rule for anybody, but truly is just for Joe Gilio. If you've been motherfucked by three or more NC State coaches. <laughs> If you if you or literally ACs did, or ACC if, commissioners, then you the get free, free popcorn at PNC Arena. Other people, are like, why does he get free popcorn? Like, well, have you uh, have you gotten three FUs from uh, head coaches? No, you've only gotten one. Get two yeah, more, two and you more. get the Joe Gillio Free Popcorn Club. <laughs> Lifetime yeah. achievement. Last item in the lightning round. One more time with the larger, <laughs> which is definitely doing nothing. <laughs> um, are we ready for the Xavier League? experience with the Carolina Panthers. So the Carolina Panthers in this post Cam Newton era finally have the hero we've been so desperately seeking. I thought you were going to play the video first. I'm going to play the video. Uh, uh, <laughs> am I vamping? Uh, yes. It does feel like they're like, hey, our owner keeps getting uh, video and audio head headlines. Like, let's find this guy who's really funny and convince everyone that this is the guy that we, we we want to see. Like, this is the guy that you want to hear from. This is the guy you want to see. Um, Pay no attention to the owner. Of Pay size attention to the and legged. speed and mobility. Over six feet, 220 pounds that can run like he does. There's only a few guys that come along like that. And it only happens every couple of years. It's really special to watch. And you know it immediately. Thanks. Yes, sir. What's, What's going on, Paul? Yes, yeah. sir. I ain't gonna lie, boy. I feel different with that helmet on, boy. Helmet tight than a mother, boy. So you got. <laughs> I'm here for it, man. I have no idea what he ever says. He's from South Carolina. He has got some syrup, man. He's got some speed in that cadence, and he's got some syrup. And I'm just like, okay. But I did catch uh, that helmet is tighter than a motherfucker. <laughs> Um, I, I'm just, you know, the Panthers were glad that he didn't just try and make a metaphor there of something that it might be tighter than like, he was like motherfucker was a cusser. They didn't have to believe out, but at least they knew they could still use the clip, right? There's certain things that you might've said that would have totally disqualified the clip. So they were like, motherfucker, we can believe that, that that'll still work. That just no metaphors there. We don't need to know. Like, like I was thinking like tighter than a vice grip, obviously was like a metaphor yeah, that I was thinking. Like that, that's, that's what I mean. You know, things Kitten, like that. Five little, le little letters that I'm missing. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here on some Hey Joe questions and comments. Hey Joe is brought to you by Craig Arm Brewing. Check them out. Crankarmbrewing.com or better yet, go down and see them in person. It's 319 West Davie Street. Crank Arm has all kinds of different beer flavors. They have beer flavored beer. The Coast Lightly hits that American light lager taste. I love it. And then they have a little bit funky strawberry wheels forever. Strawberry shortcake, pastry sour. They have a beer for every person. Go check them out. Uh, adult 21 plus, of course. Check them out. Crank Arm Brewing. It's crankarmbrewing.com. All right. We got some Hey Joe questions. Got one Hey Joe question from me. Actually, I've got two. And I think you have some comments as well. So let me start with, uh, let's start with this. Hey, Joe, who's the best living baseball player? I didn't know this was a thing, Hayes, until yesterday when Willie Mays passed oh, away man. at 93. Rest easy, Willie. Um, say, hey, man, 93 years old. This First off, you know me, number stickler. This thing stuck out to me in the, you know, the, the speed obit. 24-time All-Star. I was like, oh, okay. 24. I mean, that's a long career, man. Career. 24, 24 <laughs> times being an all-star. Then I'm looking at his baseball reference page. He played for 23 years. And I'm like, wait a second. How do you be a 24-time all-star? And it, obviously, everyone remembers when he played for the Mets at the end. It was obviously a shell of what he was. Did you know that during the 59 through 1962 seasons, there were two all-star games in each season? No. I had that's when all-star games idea. mattered, man. I had no idea. Uh, instead of interleague play, yeah, they were like, hey, it's a really good idea that we get together and get these guys who never get to see each other get to play. Oh, let's do it twice. 59 through 62. So that's how he got to 24 times as an all-star. But 600. So was he in it? Was he in it two times each of those years? Yeah. So he, he picked up six. In those he got three. six at three. Well, I mean, that yeah. makes the 24 a lot less impressive. Lot less. Honestly, <laughs> it's like it's really only like 19 all-star appearances now. Right. And I mean, what's, what's 19? I'm anyway. seeing him in a completely different light. 
This is. I love it when you mock me for for my stickler number. <laughs> that's that's good. That's good. No, Willie yeah, Willie Mays sure. com complete fraud. I, no, I, I, the whole time I was like twenty four time All Star. Now I have to find out. <laughs> it's only like nineteen. No fraud. Yeah, so. 660 career home runs, obviously, when when I was growing up, that was number three on the all-time list. Uh, 3,293 hits. I don't know where you come down on the war, the wins above replacement debate, or whether it's what its value is. Uh, but in terms of position players, uh, ex exclusive position players, he's number two. And all-time position players includes Babe Ruth, of course. He's number three in wins above replacement, basically. His um, godson, Barry Bonds, and him uh, statistically had almost identical war numbers. And um, obviously, Barry Bonds with some more career home runs than, than Mays ended up with, but Babe Ruth all time on that war list. So my question, though, is I, I think people are getting this wrong. And baseball people love to think that they're always right. But like yesterday, like he dies and like immediately it becomes on, on social media anyway, which is, I, I get is not real life. And I'm not making fun of Josh Graham because I did see him pose this question. No, please do. I think Tony Kornheiser was another one. It's like, oh, who's the who's the who's the best living baseball player now? And I'm like, um, unless Barry Bonds died yesterday, Barry Bonds is still the best living. He was yesterday, and he still like, is far today. away. Yeah, right. That, like, that was my obvious answer. I, I wasn't going deep into it. Once I hit that, I was not trying to think of others. I was like, right. I think I got a pretty good answer for this one. Yeah, and um, I get it. It's it's difficult. Like I I personally think some of these baseball stats. Like I watch college baseball, and I'm like, you're shifting in college baseball based on what numbers? Like w what a player did against Moorhead State or like Eastern Kentucky? Like that that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Okay, uh, just just play the damn game, please. Part of me says that, right? And part of me also thinks though, with Willie Mays in particular, with War they can't possibly have all of the fielding stats from all of those games that he played. So ultimately I would suggest that he was, I think most people who would, who, who saw bonds and Mays play would say that Mays was the better fielder. Bonds was the better hitter, uh, but obviously neither was a slouch at either category. It's probably, like I said, even with the, the inability to really get his fielding numbers, it's basically a coin tossed mathematically between bonds and Mays when you look at wins above replacement. So, Talking about one of the all-time greats, either way. Um, also, when he was suspended for gambling, I, I've always had a little soft spot for the gambling uh, mavericks out there. William Mays was one of them. Uh, I don't know if I knew that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he also had one year where he didn't play because of military service. Obviously, began his career in the Negro Leagues. So, you know, I, I, those numbers could have been a whole lot more. He also, he also was a pro at 17, uh, hence the nickname to say hey kid so so my, my, own, my only other observation is and you kind of hit on it right there i love thinking that in 1990 if we were debating the historical context of players and their stats and somebody said well what about war your answer would be like oh no ted williams missed those three years and uh so and so like that used to be what war had how it's right. and now it's like no war i need to get into the math of like how so the context of war in the conversation of who the greatest is has changed in the last you know couple decades all right, so you, you got some tweets. Oh, yes. I got one. Uh, it's not a question, but I do feel like I'll give you a chance to respond. Uh, mm -hmm. Wolfpack underscore Lamb says, uh, Julio, I got to agree with Hayes on this one. If you don't at least do an activity in the state, it does not count. You can't just drive into the state and say you visited. This comes up because Julio is claiming that he's knocked off three more states in his quest to visit all 50. Four more states. Okay. I'm granting you Nebraska. You covered and watched games in Omaha, so I'll give you Nebraska. You spent the night in Kansas City, right? Yeah. Like you stayed I've there. already been to Missouri, though. Okay, okay, okay. So you're, so you're trying to disqualify my runs to Kansas and South Dakota. That's what you're doing. Well, And possibly Iowa, if all you no, did was I, take a picture. No, I've been in – I had a gamble yesterday in Iowa. Well, I, but that, that you can do that while driving through now. You just got to be in the geographical border. All right, to defend yourself. What did you do in these states to justify counting them? Uh, okay. What did you do in Kansas? Kansas was a hit and run because it, it's on the other side of Kansas City. So we were like, hey, I've never been to Kansas. Let's run over there. We did pull over. We took a picture. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we touched ground in Kansas. I, I count that, sir. Wolfpack Lamb and I are not counting okay. that. That's an airport I, fly, uh, no, fly through. In my opinion, different. What um, did you do in Iowa? 
So no, yesterday we drove to South Dakota. It was about 90 minutes. So we drove up to South Dakota, just north of Sioux City. There's Sioux City, Iowa, Sioux City, North Sioux City, South Dakota. Went to South Dakota, got gas, drove around, looked around, got out, tried to uh, find anything that had like a Sioux City or like any kind of South Dakota tchotchke from the gas station came up empty. They do sell liquor. Your, your great idea of having a Vice app coming through. They do sell liquor at the gas station in South Dakota. So Huge. big ups to them, man. Um, and then, I don't know if going to the gas station is going to count. I can't. I'm not giving you South Dakota by the Permar uh, rating. And now, yeah. now we got to go back and examine some of your past states and see no. which ones are fraudulent. So okay, so now we go Iowa. We stopped in Sioux City, downtown Sioux City. This is what I'm pulling up here. This is the what? Well, what happened? Uh, what we used to be a proper region, and a proper state, I mean, man. Like. I feel like hey, that's been part of the basis of home field apparel is them right. finding cool, sweet old logos and be like, why won't we do these anymore? This tell, me awesome. why, tell me why ECU doesn't have one of these. Tell me why there's not a Wolfpack or a Tar Heel that looks like this. Like, I'm at a loss for words, man. I'm at a serious loss for words. Um, this was outside of Buffalo Alice's, I think was the name of the pizza place that we found. In I mean, he looks like up. he looks like he's telling the restaurant, Give me a beer now, or now. I'm going to smash your Bud Light side. Like, I am going to drop my fist. Unless you put a beer in it, I am going to drop an elbow or a fist on this Bud Light side and ruin your day. I like, I like to think this is the Hawkeye chasing Kirk Ferentz, saying, you better fire your fucking kid before I hit you over the head with my... I'm going to grab a bottle and hit you over the head with it. So, again... Big props to uh, Sioux City and to Iowa. They had Moosehead beer. I've not had Moosehead beer uh, probably since I was 16. So I, I was pretty pumped up about well, the Moosehead yesterday. It'll be cool when you actually go to Iowa and South Dakota and get to count those. But the, but it was nice that you got I it's nice that you got a little preview. Iowa man, get the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that's funny is the bridge to gamble in Iowa. There's, there's no way you could discredit Iowa. Mm, we'll see. Uh, the other thing that's funny is I, I talked about the time that I was in Memphis, Tennessee and drove to Tunica, Mississippi, and I feel like I went through four states in between, like Arkansas. It's yeah. one of the things, as much as it's always great to have the beach two and a half hours and the mountains three hours or whatever, you forget, like, people live in states where you truly can, like, be in three different states in three Same hours. Yeah. I'll never forget my friends when I worked at Camp Seagull in the summer, and the summer would end, and we're, like, college age, so people, like, are trying to figure out what to do next. And some people would go from the coast of North Carolina, drive to Colorado, right, to work at a ski ranch for the winter or whatever it is. So it's in the, you know, August, September. They're moving from the coast to Colorado. And they're like, all right, guys, we're going to drive cross country. And they would start out and they'd hit us up like two days later and be like, we're only one state away. We've been driving for 18 hours and we're in Tennessee. Like if you start going cross country, you only get to get one state away, and you have you made you're almost halfway to Colorado. If you drive from the Atlantic Ocean to Memphis, Tennessee, the states start coming a lot faster after that. But it is always a funny reminder of like, man, where are these places where you could just or, or think about being in Europe? We're like, I'm going to take a train and go through three countries in a two and a half hour train ride to get to the other country I'm going to. You know, I, I don't I don't leave North Carolina a lot these days unless it, unless it's a 100% planned trip to do just that. So it's funny hearing you talk about driving through four and five states in, in one little trip. Uh, I added four states this week. I don't know what you're talking about. By your standard, I've never been to Delaware. By your standard. I've I, been to Delaware a million times in my life, but by your standard, I have never been to Delaware. I would not count Delaware if I've driven through it, but I have stopped, gone to a dorm at the University of Delaware, and made out with uh, a co-ed. So that counts as visiting Delaware, my friend. I have done that. I've been to Delaware. Um, yes. so. Unless there's some deep tonguing, there's no, it doesn't count on the, on the yeah. primary scale. I think we've established now that. Yeah, you got to kiss a girl in the state for it to count. Nonsense. No. If, that's, if you got to kiss a girl for the state to count, then I'm, I'm, I've got like two. It's like North Carolina and Delaware. That's like, I'm, I'm it. I like think maybe in Virginia one time or two, I made out with a girl. <laughs> Uh, and then the last one is uh, yeah. hashtag, hey, Joe, this comes from uh, Thomas Hall. This is probably more for Hayes. Thank you very much. Making me feel at home. But does ITV culture peak more than at a jam band show at Red Hat slash Walnut Creek? Curious as I'm waiting for Goose the Band. I mean, if, if we're talking true ITV culture, yes, it does peak somewhere differently. Like true ITV culture peaks at like 
people that come out to watch the Carolina Country Club tennis championship between, you know, former UNC tennis player Will Plyler and and people are actually watching this as if it's like Wimbledon, you know? Like that to me would be peak ITV culture. But you're not wrong. One of my favorite things about it is, like, what's a jam band show famous for other than – well, I shouldn't ask that. That opens the door wide open. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, I was going to say uh, psychedelic drugs, light yeah. shows, whatever, but like, like when you think of a Grateful Dead show, like you think of people as like hippies kind of or like dressed down, just a T-shirt. You're not dressing up to go to it, probably in flip-flops. It is always funny seeing the people with the most money in town <laughs> obviously have paid a lot of money for the tickets that they're in, but then dressing and acting like they, are, you know, are completely homeless and may get, be getting on a bus to go see this band the next day in Greenville, South Carolina, or whatever. So you're not – Thomas Hall, I will give, I will grant you that that's some solid ITV culture. But if I had some time to think of what the full list would be like, um, I'm not sure that that would be at the top. All right, we got uh, OG Sleek Fleet live tomorrow from Eford Studio in downtown Raleigh. Looking forward to it. And since I always seem to forget the outro music, here it is. Mm -hmm.